Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Curl Space Program 0 .90 Beta. In this episode we're going to launch some dual missions and I don't know how many of them we're going to get up there but uh, we have at least four, possibly five to launch and so lots of stuff to do. The first is this quad probe pack and you can see it's got the resource scanners for carbonite and water. Hopefully these resource scanners can scan for pretty much everything. But uh, we have to send some over there first because we've got a lot of moons to scan and that's what these guys are going to be handling. This is a very common sort of pattern for me, uh, sending four probes over to Jewel. And uh, that hasn't always worked out very well. In fact, it very often does not work out very well. Hopefully this time it will work out better. You can see they are mounted on docking ports. So uh, little docking port juniors. That's just for convenience sake and so that they don't knock into each other when decoupling. Um, they don't have any RCS incidentally, it's just these uh, little radial thrusters and that's it. And that's because all they have to do is to get into orbit around their target moon. Uh, the, this stage should be able to get them over to Jewel and maybe get them over to their moons. I'm hoping it'll uh, just be able to bounce between the moons and so and then drop them off at the appropriate time and so that's the goal it's got 3600 delta V here as you can see this doesn't read it properly I think that they each have 842 or so that may not be enough to get into orbit around the moons uh, it depends on our approach it could take a while to get these into proper positioning so we'll have to see but uh, yep that's our stage we've got uh, rock max 48 7s's at the bottom there and actually the probe core is at the bottom here there's a probodobodyne hex there and so it's sort of mounted uh, a little bit in reverse of what you might expect but that was most convenient for this unfortunately uh, this is a pretty light payload to uh, low carbon orbit obviously it's uh, less than 18 tons uh, which means that in terms of our strider launchers it uses the lowest uh, the smallest size launcher the SL the super Legera. And the problem with that, of course, is that this is a fairly wide payload, as you might suspect, with four probes on top. So the fairing, the, the whole thing looks a little bit wonky. The whole thing looks a little bit weird. It's got a very thin, you know, base because it's got this whole thing going, but uh, then up here it widens out to this weird thing. I can't do anything about that. One thing I have done is the... Hold on, if I can get to these fairings. Ah, I've upped the ejection power on the fairings and hope that that'll be enough to prevent them from colliding into this SRV, which uh, will, of course, allow the SRV to be recoverable. That's going to be critical. Last time we tried the SL, the those fairings collide with the SRB, and that is not the best sort of situation. So anyway, this is what we're going to start off with. Uh, fairly low impact thing though complicated in and of itself especially once we get to the dual system but yeah uh, a cheap well relatively cheap launch uh, cheap if we can recover this and everything else goes well actually the main cost is the is the payload itself the rest the launcher is not that expensive as you can see okay so with all that said let's take it out to the launch pad okay here we are Throttle up. You can see from Curb Alarm Clock that we are 31 minutes away from the planned dual transfer time. So hopefully we'll get a bunch of missions to the transfer right at the correct timing. But we can sort of hide that for now. Yep. Okay. So standard thing. And throttle is up. SAS is on. And launch. You can see we're sort of launching at dawn, which is ideal if you want to send a lot of missions up during a single day. This thing isn't going up very fast, but that's standard for this rocket, especially when carrying its full payload. Its capacity is 18 tons, this is 17 tons, so pretty much right up there. Now, somebody reminded me about the SVL Plus button, and uh, yeah, I know, uh, I could do that. Uh, just have it follow the prograde vector down. 
but I do like the sense of control. I'm a control freak. Still, it looks like the little Rocket Max 2477s down here are a little bit short of fuel compared to the SRB. They're supposed to last for the same amount of time, but they didn't. And of course, the Rock Max 2477s are used for maneuvering and keeping it stable because there isn't much gimbling on the SRB. This is quite a long extra burn. Okay, set and ignition. Oh, looks uh, looks like it's separated intact. Definitely, last time it didn't look like it's separated intact. May should have had the drag chutes, drog chutes, I think, uh, deploy first on separation. But if we recover it, we re recover it. So we'll see what happens. This is a little bit steep, and that was because of the low TWR of the launch bit. But we can flatten out now. Okay, I think we're good for fairing set. Wow, even on something small like this, that's, that was pretty close. I thought that uh, with the rocket being so small, they'd uh, give it a little bit more space, but... Hmm. Some tweaking is clearly necessary here. Okay, looking good. I guess we'll have this stage come back down, so we'll burn short of orbit for this stage, and then we'll set and then have the have the transfer stage complete things. Okay, we'll hold there. Let's see, uh, did I action group? Ah, good. I action group some of the solar panels. Obviously, couldn't action group the probe solar panels because uh, the ones facing the other probe would smash into it. But uh, this is good. All right. So we don't just have the carbonite scanner and all. We've got altimetry, just in case. Uh, helpful for landing, obviously, and multispectral sensor for biomes. That's why this is all very expensive because we've got all that stuff going for us as well. Okay, I think that's uh, where I'll leave it. So, sip. And this stage. Let's wait a little bit. Okay, that's our first launch, 109 by 107. And uh, let me plot its transfer so that we have something, you know, uh, an alarm for it. And again, that's what I meant, uh, I have to remember to make alarms. Right now, there wouldn't be any alarm for it. There's no automated maneuver, there's no automated SOI change. And so I need to remember to create alarms for everything. And in this case, that means artificially making a transfer maneuver, even though I don't know if I have enough time yet to make this transfer. In other words, I don't know if I'll have to, I'll be in the middle of a launch or something. Oh, I think we just hit Minmus. Okay, so it's sort of like that. All right, well, we'll do an adjustment uh, at the descending node there. Let's see how much that'll cost. Oh, not one year. No, I don't want the... There we go, 13 days. Okay, so this combination of maneuvers seems good. How long till the planned maneuver? 13 minutes. I think that's long enough to launch something. So let's just add this maneuver now. And again, yes, I know I can autom automatically add the maneuvers, but I prefer to have a sense of what's going on. Oh, I forgot to check whether we got the stage recovered back. Uh, it looks like quad probe pack debris recovered, and that's about the right amount of funds. 3.27 meters per second on touchdown, and so that's excellent. We got the SRB back, we got all the things back, and so that's fine. This was from previous things, okay. Let's get those cleared. Alright, so let me load up the next vessel we're gonna launch. 
Okay, so the next thing we're gonna launch is what I've called the Prodigal Probe, and that's because while we are going to send it out, we would very much like to see it return again. And it is carrying two goo containers, Science Junior, obviously a parachute for this, this portion here, which is what's gonna return, hence the heat shield down here, um, just in case, of course, and uh, a blade of shielding has been reduced. This is the actual portion which will do the landing and the return, hopefully. And so it is going to carry the landing struts even for the return trip. And that's a little bit of a downside, but uh, considering the Delta V that we're talking about here, 4,395 vacuum, it's pretty good. Now, in the case where it can't return on its own, it uh, runs out of fuel, which would be odd because We've not only got the launch stages, we've got this transfer stage. This is a transfer stage to Jewel. And then this is just supposed to go around the Jewel system, land on either Bop or Paul. That's the target for uh, this Prodigal Probe. We're going to launch two of them. We're going to launch one for Bop and one for Paul. So uh, here, explore Bop contract and explore Paul contract. And so we don't really need to uh, return with that data, but we are intending to. Uh, we will transmit a little piece to fulfill the contract uh, ahead of time just in case, but besides that uh, we're going to return the rest. Uh, probably we're going to transmit, transmit the temperature scan and then return the glue containers and the Science Junior, hopefully, and of course the seismometer reading. So that's the plan, but in case it runs out of fuel or doesn't have enough fuel to return, it's got the pipe endpoints to refuel it so we can have it hang out around the Joule system and uh, get refueled and then returned. So that's a backup plan. I really want to see these back. So, yeah, we're gonna launch two of these. And again, it's going to be on the, oops, one, two of those, on the Strider SL. So it's, it's looking a little bit weird, as expected. This time I've put the, you know, last time it worked out without uh, putting the, the dr drogue shoots first, so maybe I should uh, cancel that idea. We won't have that happen. Okay, so yeah, it'll just uh, go like it did last time and hopefully it'll still be recovered. Ejection power is up all the way. Um, yeah, I don't know, it, it seems to work alright with the Rock Max 2477s going out first anyway, so I'll just leave that be. Alright, so uh, launching two of these. Let's uh, launch this one now. Okay, here we go. Throttle up, SAS on, and we're all set to go. Launch. All right, pretty heavy this time too. Now, just for the sake of diversity, because we gotta be launching this same probe again, I think I'll handle the transfer of the quad probe pack and this first, and then launch the second prodigal probe. Uh, just to mix things up a bit. And of course because the timing works out that way too. Okay, looking good so far. About to break the speed of sound in a bit. And the tra trajectory looks good. I'll try and get a little bit flatter this time than last time. Okay, well just the SRB now. So uh, let me just check. Yeah, okay, the staging is fine. All right, here we go. Okay, well, it looks like the SRB stage is intact at least. And we'll continue here. Well, wow, it's some message already occurred. Oh, wow, it, it did reach the ground pretty darn quickly there. Uh, that was a lot faster than I thought it'd go. Okay. Okay, fairing sep. Still a little bit dodgy there. If, it had been, if this had been a longer vehicle where the two tips of it came close together, they would have knocked out an engine. Let's see, did I action group the solar panels? Apparently not. Okay. Well, this one set there, one there, 
And there's also one down here on the probe. Uh, that's a little bit high for this, maybe. Oh, they're paused. Oh, oh auto saving. Okay. Uh, I don't know. 35 might remain in orbit. But anyway, let's just let it go. KU 109 by 89 using the somewhat overused LVT 95 8. But uh, it's got that nice ISP, so we are going to use it. Alright, so this probe is in orbit. Let's see, what's our timing now? Well, I've got five minutes to plot this one out. Well, this is very interesting. Here I could get a lathe encounter. If I move up a bit, there was, I think, a Val encounter somewhere. I don't see it right now. And so that's a leaf encounter. And on the flip side, I thought I saw a Tylo. Oh, wait. Uh, there's a Tylo encounter there. I think there was another Tylo encounter. Oh, there's a leaf encounter there. It's too bad we're not aiming for any of these things, but there's a Tylo encounter there and a Val encounter if we want to go backwards. <laughs> so, yeah, this is, this is quite an interesting time to send things over to Jewel. Uh, let's let's just go through all the possible encounters again. So if we move out here, it is obviously the wrong direction. But uh, Tylo here, uh, Ty uh, Tylo to Val here. There's Lath crashing in. Oh wait, I uh, forgot another Tylo one there. Lath. I swear there was a Val one somewhere here before but it's not showing up now okay well um, we don't want any of those things because we're gonna end up on Bop or Paul so not very helpful let's just get close to Jewel here okay so uh, this burn here and then this node 2 uh, correction of 235 uh, meters per second at the mid course plane change Alright, so this is going to be in 13 minutes, so we can just hop back over to the mission that we launched first. And then, yep, yeah, we need to get there pretty quick. Oh wait, uh, let me add the alarm. Okay, now let's go. Okay, here we are on the nighttime side. It's a little bit dark. How much ambient light adjustment should I do? I don't know. But uh, here we go. Okay, off we go with the first mission to Jewel. Okay, coming close to the end of this burn, and I've double checked that it's not using the fuel from these. Gotta make sure that that doesn't happen. It's been a reasonably accurate burn, so I think I'll just retain the existing plot and we'll adjust that to make course plane change as necessary. Okay, let's get this to point zero. There we go. Alright, so yeah, I'm going to be satisfied with that one, and we'll do this plot, and I'll add that alarm. Okay, so Quad Pro Pack is on its way out of the Kerbin SOI, and again, I'm not adding the SOI change alarm because I don't think I need to worry about the SOI change alarm in this case, and I'll make further adjustments later on. So yeah, sometimes the SOI change alarm uh, concerns me, in this case, uh, not so much because uh, we've got a pretty broad encounter with uh, Jewel right now. We do have a broad encounter with Jewel right now, right? Jewel? Oh. That's actually. Okay. Well, that's very different. There we go. Okay. Well, a little bit looser. Uh, yeah, so we've got a, a good way to get to Jewel right now, and if it uh, changes a little bit, I can just modify it like I just did. So, should be okay. Alright, so now back to the Prodigal Probe. Okay, since I'm going to have another one of these, I do want to rename this specifically for its target. And I guess we'll... Uh, if I can reach the Probe Core, though. Hmm. It looks like I've made the Probe Core impossible to reach. I see it there. That That's the Probe Core right there. Just not willing to admit that I can click on it. Oh, there we go. All right, so we're going to rename vessel. This is going to be Bob Probe. 
Okay. And then the other one will be Paul Probe. Let's line up with the node. Uh, let's get rid of some alarms. The curbing the jewel thing is obvious at this point. And this one we will handle. Okay, this should have plenty of thrust. I think this will be enough time. Uh, not not as much thrust as I thought it would have. Alright, we might have started the burn a bit late. Okay, coming close to the close of this. About 10 seconds left, it looks like. Not much left in the stage after this either. Yep, auto saving? Yeah. Okay. Uh, point one. All right. Let's just leave it be. Okay. Uh, I think we should just dump the stage. It's uh, six meters per second left. Yeah. I'm just going to discard it. Okay. So this has a single Rockamax 487S on its tail, and that's that. So uh, yep, 4,395 meters per second. And I will, let's check on that plot to make sure it's alright. Judging from the last one, this one is probably a little bit further off. Uh, our closest approach isn't exactly very close right now. Uh, let us let me redo things a bit. Okay, so actually that plot was making things worse. Uh, this, this is a pretty standard approach to Jewel. And now we will adjust. Now this is for Bop. I should really uh, line up with Bop. Bop is weird. Is there any way to line up with Bop maybe? I don't think so. Not easily. Not from this angle. Okay anyway at least it's going in the right direction and we've got that plot done. So with that I will add that alarm and move on to the next thing. Okay, here we go. I didn't even bring it back to the VAB because it's just another prodigal probe and this time to Paul. So uh, throttle this up, SAS is on, and launch. So we have launched three of the smallest Strider rocket and so sort of uninspiring when it comes to Jewel, of course, because Jewel is, well, certainly further away than EVE, and yet we are using the smallest rockets to launch everything. But don't worry, uh, the next launch after this will be the largest of the Strider rocket, uh, Strider rocket series, and that should be interesting. That will be launching 240 tons to orbit, and that 240 tons will consist of, of course, a transfer stage, but also the Jewel Oasis to uh, parallel the Drez Oasis and also the Gilly Oasis. Well, not Gilly Oasis, but you, you get the picture. Uh, what was it? The Gilly Water Fountain. The Gilly does not get an Oasis yet. But uh, yeah, so Jewel Oasis and a CRT, uh, Crew Rescue and Transfer Vehicle. Both of those are going to be on the same launch. And the question is whether I should put Kerbals on. Well, I need at least one Kerbal to control it. But, because I don't have a remote controller. But, yeah, whether I put more or whether I launch the Kerbals on a separate launch is an open question. And that's why I initially said four or five launches. Because I didn't know whether I was going to do a crew launch. It's also possible to have a, a supply launch, a supplementary supply launch because we might want to throw some extra food, water, and oxygen to Jewel, just in case. So that's something else I'm thinking about. Well, since our other recoveries worked well, I don't want to uh, stage the parachutes here. We'll keep going with what worked. Okay, and just waiting for the SRB here. All right, that's that. Set. Set. Oh. Ah, uh, this time we lost the uh, SRB. We should definitely, uh, we should definitely have a separate separation and lighting. 
we shouldn't do those both at the same time. It worked last time though, it just didn't work this time, I guess there are random factors that, uh, not random, but uh, unknown factors that come into play that determine whether the SRB stage will explode when I light this engine or not. Unless it was the fairings, let me double check. No, that damage by engine exhaust. Well, no, it says procedural SRB collided in the conic fairing. Hmm. I guess uh, having the strong separation force isn't a guarantee. It looks like it was the fairing, not the engine exhaust, that caused the problem. Maybe. Uh, yeah, well, that's a shame. That uh, adds some uncertainty to future Strider SL launches. Speaking of uncertainty, let's see if how the separation of the fairings works right now. Yeah. This time it worked uh, pretty cleanly, actually. Good space between them. Now, one thing we haven't done in this series of missions, you know, with the Dres missions, the Gilly mission, uh, the Gilly slash Eve mission, and also uh, these jewel missions is take advantage of our resource extraction on Minmus, right? Because we've got the ability to refuel in orbit from Minmus resources, but we haven't really done that. And that's really something I need to work on. And that's a mission planning thing. Obviously we've got the situation in place. We can make LFO from Minmus or on the moon even, but uh, it's more efficient from Minmus. But I just didn't uh, factor that into the mission planning, and so I have to get used to the idea, to the idea that I can take advantage of that. Uh, we're at 35 again. Oh well, let's just let it go. Yep, just need to adapt for that. Alright, 112 by 86 for now. And let me plot out the, the trip to Jewel. Okay, that's a pretty good approach to Jewel. And so, 1948 for the first bit, and then 233 for the plane change. Doesn't look like there should be any problems with that. 13 minutes here. That's enough time to launch something else, so let me get the Kerbal on clock set with this number okay and now for the big launch okay so here we go jewel oasis and crt and as you can tell it's a pretty pretty dangerous looking payload just from the fairing uh, if we open this up uh, the jewel oasis is very similar to dres oasis there are some minor differences but nothing huge it's still uh, two nuclear engines on the bottom and uh, those provide a total of 3,774 delta V. So lots of delta V, but it's a little bit lighter. I uh, dumped some of the fuel from the tanks. Uh, these guys don't actually have much. Why does that ha even have 71 units of water? Those should be empty. Okay, uh, there there is water uh, elsewhere, like there. That one's empty. Uh, I made sure that there was an appropriate amount of water. So if we could take a look at the life support, we see that we've got 641 days worth of water that we're carrying for seven crew, but uh, we, we probably won't have more than three. And uh, as you can see, they have quite a supply there. The empty water space would be four, of course, being the oasis and uh, getting water and converting it. Now, I haven't got a, a unit to do the water gathering yet. I haven't sent that to Jewel. So I might have to put that together. I might hold off on that. I'll see how this launch goes first. So this is actually the the reverse order from what we're doing with Gilly where we send the drilling unit first and then we'll send the Oasis later. In this case we're sending the Kerbals and their supplies and everything first and then we will uh, we'll worry about drilling for for water later. Anyway, uh, we've got a CRT just in case something goes wrong, they can come back, and that's why we I'm only intending to send three Kerbals, because the CRT's capacity is for three, and um, it's got life support 
as well. Um, I forget. I think it has just enough for the return journey. Uh, it might be less actually. We might have to leave one crow behind or something like that. We'll have to see. Uh, if something goes wrong, of course. Otherwise, it can do other business, like for instance, refueling those probes that we sent. So, you know, we've got the pipe endpoints on the BOP particle probe and the Paul particle probe, and this is what can do the refueling. I can't quite move the camera so you can see the top of it very well. So, sorry about that, but uh, yep, yeah, it is a very tall thing. But uh, this can also do other science if necessary. Of course, it can do EVAs around all sorts of things. It's got plenty of Delta V. It's got its little uh, uh, Rock Max 487S's. Okay, so that's that. But we've got another new thing going here. And by the way, you might wonder why would I put the CR? I could have uh, just sent the CRT separate. The problem is that the Dres Oasis. Uh, with its transfer stage, uh, not Dres Oasis, Jewel Oasis with its transfer stage, right? Because it needs a larger transfer stage to get to Jewel. Uh, those two combined uh, outstripped the capacity of the normal Strider. And so we needed to use the Strider X, and since we were using the Strider X, I decided to put the CRT as well because the Strider X can carry both. And so that's the situation there. Now, the transfer stage, I have decided to use uh, this Kerbidine KR2L engine, and that's, it might be the first time we're using it in this series, I don't remember. Uh, but you, it might seem overpowered to you, it is sort of overpowered. The reason is, I wanted enough thrust so that if something were to go wrong with all this part, this could get the payload to orbit. So that's the idea. And then we could refuel it in orbit and get it on its way. So that's why I've gone with the KR2L here. And so that's just a safety measure, and with that safety measure, I hope to send the three curls on board this, and uh, have it be reasonably safe. But uh, you see, eight boosters of the kind that we have been recovering, and four main sails on the center stack. I introduced the Strider X previously, but just in case you forgot, that is what it is. So yes, this is uh, still a still a dodgy sort of thing. But we'll try it out. 707,000 funds altogether. And the booster, uh, once we recover the boosters, we'll get about 112,000 back. Most of the cost is the payload. Um, I don't want to pull things off right now. Let's just select crew. Ah, we only have uh, three. We need to go to the astronaut complex. We really don't need a. We, we only need one pilot. I think I'm going to go with uh, Barkin Kerman as another scientist. We could do with two scientists at least. Um, and we'll go with that for now. Like I said, I'm just going to send three. So yeah, no Dunzer. Raiden, Rodlin, and Barklin. Okay. Well, let's wish them all the best and uh, take it out to the launch pad. Oh, crikey. This doesn't look like it would survive on the launch pad for very long. Okay, you will note that 0.97 thrust to weight ratio when we dump the boosters, so it's going it's pretty cumbersome altogether. Uh, 1.23 thrust to weight ratio at the start. It's not going very quickly. It's carrying a, a close to its maximum payload. And that's saying something considering what its payload is. Okay, so SAS on, throttle up. We'll uh, remove curve alarm clock for now. We've got 11 minutes and 55 seconds till that Paul particle probe has its transfer. You can see the lights from the payload shining down here right now uh, where three Kerbals are ready to go and we know they have a lot of supplies at least that's a plus. Okay let's uh, let's light it. Now let's get that up. Oh, come on. Okay now let's light it. Wow Okay, we've cleared the launch clamps, and that's no trivial thing. We've also not exploded the launch pad, which is also not a trivial thing. I'm gonna wait a while before starting the pitch program on this. Yep. Gonna be very patient. 
Uh, we've got some overheating on the mainsails. I'll, have to, uh, I'll let it go for a little bit, but I'll throttle back once it reaches about halfway. It's not like we have a lot of thrust to begin with here. Okay. Let's... Nope, heat's still creeping up. This is going to mean that our thrust rate ratio will be even lower once we have booster set though. Because uh, we're not burning the fuel as fast as we otherwise would have. Okay, here we go. Let's start with the pitch. Uh, I'm nervous here. I really don't want it to roll. Um, is it going to try and roll? Seems to be. Let me uh, set roll 90 here to prevent it from rolling. Well, I was already halfway through the roll when I did that. It's real. Well, yeah, well, it's big. It's big. I'm not going to say anything encouraging, just in case. We, we need to avoid such... such tempting of the Kraken, basically. 30 more seconds on the boosters. Uh, overheating is going down a bit, so I'm going to throttle up just a little bit. See what I can get away with. We're about Mach 1 here. Speed of sound. Now obviously I don't want to release fairings here. I don't want to release fairings for quite a while, in fact. We'll take them all the way to the point where we shut down the mainsails in preparation for coasting to orbit. Coasting to apoapsis, I mean, of course. Okay, getting ready for booster set. Okay, boosters out and set. Oh boy. And set. Okay. That's the first time I've seen eight boosters go off like that. I think. I don't usually put eight boosters on things. It's might have been a long time at least. Okay, uh, throttling up all the way doesn't really help the overheating, so I'll, I'll pull it back a bit. Okay, well, uh, the boosters are clear. It looks like they might be recoverable. We will find out. We've so far had a very uh, steep ascent. Well, that's gone fairly well. Yep. But the Strider series has been very stable. And this has been... I mean, of course I did a lot of strut work to make sure that the payload was going to be as stable as possible. But still, this is much less wiggly than I thought it would be. I mean, you just look at that payload fairing and you go, oh, this thing is going to wiggle all over the place. But no, it's, it's managed to be pretty good. Well, still good for orbit on this stage. So that is excellent. Our 240 ton capacity is looking good here. Okay, we finally have an apoapsis in space. This is a very, very long burn here because of the thrust weight of these engines right now. It's going to be pretty close to a continuous burn to orbit, I think. Not too far off from that. Okay, well, pretty darn tight orbit right now. Um, it's been one continuous burn. 
haven't stopped it to close to Wapwap since that's why we still have the fairings. I'm gonna allow the stage to re-enter, of course. And I'll cut it there. We've got the camera swing, so it's pretty borderline. But uh, yeah, let's have uh, fairing separation. Okay. And then stage separation. Ignition of this engine. Okay. So now we will coast to Apoapsis, but actually we're pretty darn close to orbit as it is. So, yep, for those who wonder whether it's possible to do a single continuous burn to orbit, we, we were pretty close to doing that just now. It's only because I wanted to dispose of this stage that we didn't. Well, I'm almost surprised that that worked. <laughs> uh, we'll have to be careful about the... Uh, we're auto-saving, hopefully? Yeah, okay. Be careful about how I extend the solar panels on this. I better not take too long. We've got the other mission to uh, send off. Three more minutes there. Okay, 100 by 85. I think we'll stop it there. Let me extend the solar panels and everything. Uh, let's just go with the infernal box. Okay, solar panel hinge. Sounds right. Okay, and is Action Group 1 the solar panels? Please let it be the solar panels. How about... Oh, those, that's the solar panels on the CRT. Okay, how about 2? Okay, we've got solar panels here. Okay, very good, very good. Looks like we're all set. A little bit upside down, but we're in space. Doesn't matter. Okay, with that, I think we can turn to the prodigal probe for Paul. Okay, uh, just checking our stage recovery. It looks like some of them got destroyed. Oh, uh... Oh, that's Rock Max 40 2477. That's for the SL then. I don't know. I guess oh okay, we haven't uh, gotten back. Okay, so that's that was for the X uh, SL launch. We haven't gotten any information. Why do we keep getting these back? I could have sworn I cleared those before. Anyway, uh, yeah, so we haven't gotten word of the other stages that we just launched with the boosters, the eight boosters we need to get back. Yeah, hey, I'll get rid of this alarm right now. Oh, I didn't add the alarm for the for the Jewel Oasis, so oh, I, I hope I hope I don't make the mistake of forgetting it. <laughs> that would be really weird. Okay, just a little bit left in this burn. Seems to have gone pretty well so far. We shouldn't be too far off, actually. Uh, point two. Maybe that's all right, but let let's try and zero it out. This thing can maneuver anyway, and I'm probably gonna dump this stage. Uh, maybe we'll keep it. Thirty five is is you know statistically significant. Yeah, I guess we'll keep the 35 for now. It's not much of a hindrance considering how this turns. Okay, back to prograde. And let me let me rename this to Paul Probe. Okay. Now we can add the alarm. And let's just double check how it is. Oh, that's pretty good. A little bit off on inclination. Considering it's Paul, I guess we should flatten that out. There we go. Okay, so it's all set. Okay, we've got a pretty similar plot to what we've been doing. 1981 on the first node and then 245 on the second. And so that should be pretty good. It should be within the 
the scope of our transfer stage. So that's excellent. So let's just line up with the node. This one's got to take a little bit of time to turn towards it. Got 4 minutes and 20 seconds to transfer node, which means how long do we need to actually do this burn for? Only uh, 2 minutes and 15 seconds. Again, this one had a high thrust weight ratio because just in case of emergencies it was meant to boost us up. But now it's got the high thrust weight ratio and so we can get pretty close to the node before starting our burn. Okay, with this vessel currently lit by its own lights, as you can see, we are actually in the dark, uh, though I think ambient light adjustment is helping a bit. But uh, here we go. The, the KR2L making a magnificent plume. Alright, coming close to the end finally. Our fourth mission about to get its jewel transfer and be on its way to the mid-course plane change. Okay, last little bit here. Don't wander a little maneuver node, come on. Uh, turning this to follow the maneuver node is not a thing that I can do. I think we'll just have to, uh, well, let's see how much of this 1.3 we can adjust for. Okay. Uh, let's see what we can do at the mid-course plane change. Hopefully one meter per second isn't going to hurt too much. Ah, look, we even got a Tylo encounter. Okay, so let's... There we go. It wasn't a real Tylo encounter, of course. It was actually a crash into jewel situation, but that'll take care of it. And, yeah, we've already got this pass here, and we'll turn it into that at the mid-course plane change. So now we add that alarm. And there you have it for the four jewel missions I plan to launch in this episode. I might launch other stuff to jewel. I'm thinking of uh, numerous things. Maybe I'll send the drilling unit over. Maybe I'll send some more supplies because, you know, this has Granted, it's got a uh, thousand days with food, water, and it's actually got the, the whatchamacallit, uh, it's got converters to make sure it can convert uh, carbon dioxide back to oxygen and all that. It actually, it can deal with wastewater as well. See, carbon extractor, we could do uh, water splitter and stuff like that. So, that's a possibility, but, but yeah, more, more supplies is good. So I'll think about that, but maybe I'll just move on to the asteroid, and maybe we should take a look at that. I think that's the one that we have to eject, so let me make sh sure of that in the Space Center. Okay, yep, uh, the contract was to eject a Class D asteroid out of the solar system, and this is a Class D asteroid that we're tracking, KHU-880, and it is coming in in eight days. So. Uh, Either I'm going to be launching some more stuff in the next episode to Jewel, but probably sometime in the next episode I'm going to be aiming for this asteroid. Probably what I want to do is to bring it into orbit around Kerbin first, uh, in order to help time stuff properly. It's uh, still eight days. It could potentially be sent over. The goal is to send it over to Jewel and have Jewel do the rest of the boost over. So we'll have to aim for maybe uh, 2,000 meters per second. We don't have a lot of time to uh, get this mission done, so I think we're not going to wait until some sort of fortuitous alignment of planets so that we could go from, for instance, Duna to Dredge to Jewel or something like that. I think just heading straight to Jewel uh, with 2,000 meters per second of Delta V and then having Jewel do the rest of it will probably be the best way to go. I don't know if in eight days, uh, the I mean, you can sort of see Jewel will probably be around here will be quite short of the 90 degrees that we normally want for a Joule transfer. But then again, Joule covers quite a wide... Why is it making that? Hmm. Anyway, uh, quite a wide arc when it comes to uh, being able to hit it. So, yeah, it could work, or we might need to uh, keep it in orbit. Yeah, I'll have to see. And of course, it'll be helpful to have it in orbit and see what its mass is in order to plan for what kind of vehicle we need in order to push it out. So that's another consideration. 
Its periapsis is 34,000 kilometers, so it's not coming close to Kerbin itself. Uh, it'll, uh, so, I mean, if we wanted to have Kerbin help boost it out, that could be a possibility. We could nudge it into Kerbin a bit if we could get to it quickly enough. I'll think about that maybe even before it gets into Kerbin SOI. I'm not entirely sure we can actually angle for it like that, but we'll see. Lots of things to think about when it comes to that asteroid. After that, we'll do the mid-course plane changes, of course, and I'll try to keep that as short as possible. Okay, so uh, with that, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.